Hello, and welcome to another episode of Storytime. Today's story comes from my latest collection, Mistletoe Magic and Other Holiday Tales, which, as you can well imagine from the title, has something to do with the December holidays. And the story I'm going to read to you today is from Charlie Catches the Christmas Spirit. To say that Charlie lacked the Christmas spirit would be putting it mildly. It wasn't that he had a Scrooge-type personality or objected to the holiday on religious grounds or anything like that. He just didn't see the need to hang a wreath on the office door, put colored lights around the grimy window that barely led the sunshine into our space, or do anything else to mark the season. This is a business, kid, he would tell me, when I would suggest each December 1st that maybe one small holiday ornament wouldn't hurt. That's what I want this place to look like. Where's your Christmas spirit? I'd ask, not really expecting an answer, before resignedly putting the decorations away. But for a man so focused on having the office look like a place of business, he tended to take a more casual approach to the financial side. And it fell to me to start those uncomfortable conversations when the color in the checkbook's balance column shifted from black to red. Today was one of those days. And it went the way all those talks tend to go. I gave him the stack of to be paid or else bills. And he looked at them briefly before handing them back to me saying only, you worry too much kid. Remember, it's all about the numbers. That was Charlie's stock phrase. The one he pulled out whenever I confronted him with some uncomfortable fact about the current state of the bank account belonging to Adams Investigation Service, Charlie Adams, PI. I've been working for him for close to 10 years, and by now, I was able to predict the actions that would precede his statement. First, he'd look up at me as though I had no biz business being on his side of our minuscule office, disturbing him while he was engaged in something extremely critical, like balancing playing cards one on top of the other or connecting endless miles of paper clips into a chain for no discernible reason other than to make me spend hours undoing them when I needed some to clip timesheets to invoices. Not that I needed all that many these days, given the current state of our client work, which was minimal, to put it kindly. Then he'd sigh, an exhalation that came from the depths of his inconsiderable bulk and frown. Finally, he'd wave his hand as though my words, and possibly my presence too, were just an irritating fly that could be swatted away. But this time it didn't work. This time it was serious. The information I brought to his attention this Friday afternoon, while uncomfortable and most assuredly unwelcome, needed immediate action that was far beyond my scope as the receptionist slash assistant slash bookkeeper slash general runner of errands. If we didn't get some income, we'd be in the cold, dry darkness due to the shutoff notices from the gas, electric, and water companies. And he'd run the risk of operating without a license since his renewal application was due right before December 25th. That's just a little excerpt from the story, Charlie Catches the Christmas Spirit. It was such a fun story to play with. I had, of course, I had to do a lot of research to find out what exactly could a private eye do and not do. You know, what was legal, if you had a license, what wasn't. But not only that, it was the compilation of characters that came into the story. Not only Charlie, 
and his assistant, but also a client, a possible breaker of the law, and just, I don't know, just some general fun people that I just kept throwing into the mix to see what would happen. That's the best part about writing short stories. You can really play around a lot. Um, anyways, ultimately, Charlie does catch the Christmas spirit. And we're not talking about a ghost here. He does catch the Christmas spirit. But you're going to have to read the story to find out what exactly caused his shift in attitude toward that particular holiday. And what's next on the horizon? for Adam's Investigation Services. So as I said, the story is available in Mistletoe Magic and Other Holiday Tales, along with other ones. And I hope you will look for it in your favorite bookstore or online. Check it out and uh, let me know what you think about the story. Thanks for joining me here at Storytime. <laughs>